Hey guys, Wells Knight here, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. I'm having a fantastic day. Things might look a little bit different around here. I did a little bit of work between episodes. Uh, so, basically what I did is I took that iron production and I revamped it. Um, I decided to do it between episodes because it's essentially the same system as before, just bigger. Um, so, this is our new iron production uh, and processing, and we are now producing uh, quite a lot of iron bars, iron plates, look at this, iron bars filling up like crazy, iron plates we're getting there, and then we're also producing screws as well. I added that, and the way I did that is over here, I basically just had four constructors dedicated to iron bars that then feed into four constructors dedicated to screws. Um, so basically, there are now four constructors each dedicated to iron plates, uh, iron bars, and screws. So that's quite a lot of production, and this will uh, definitely take care of our early game needs. Uh, but I decided to do this off camera, as I said, because uh, it, it's essentially the same system as before. It's just bigger. Um, so today, there's a few things we need to do. We definitely want to do some unlocks right away, but I also want to revamp our copper production and get that going properly. And then I think there's another limestone node somewhere around here pretty nearby as well. Yeah, like over there. It might be up on top of that hill. Um, but I'd like to get more concrete being produced as well, because, uh, like, this is a fair amount, but we'll go through it so quickly with all the foundations and, and building-related stuff. So, first things first, let's unlock a few things. Let me just grab some of our storage here. There we go. Uh, you know what, we'll just take... Oh, wrong button. Take all of it, but not that one. So we got a ton of screws grab, we'll say, like, four stacks of plates, and then we'll grab, like, four stacks of bars. Okay. Oh, and we need some concrete, too, probably, for various unlocks and things. Eh, that should be enough. Okay, so let's look at our hub here and see if maybe we can unlock some goodies. I think there's a fair amount. Uh, actually, we probably need some copper wire, too, while I'm at it. Let's just grab some of that. Okay, that should be all the resources we need. If we go to our hub, uh, let's do field research, and then we'll want to go part assembly, obstacle clearing, and the resource sink bonus program. The jump pads I can probably wait on for the moment. Um, but the rest of it is pretty important, and I'm going to do... I, I don't know if you can actually unlock another thing right away, or if you have to wait for the thingamadoodle to come back. What What's this supposed to be? Oh, screws. Okay. There we go. There we go. So we've got that going. Now, can I... The molecular analysis go straight. The go, go where? Go away, Ada. That'll allow us to research stuff. That's useful. Can I now just do, um, like, obstacle clearing immediately? No, I have to wait two, uh, two minutes and 40 seconds for the pod to come back. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get part assembly, obstacle clearing, and the resource sync bonus program also unlocked. And then we'll start doing some stuff. All right, my friends, we have everything unlocked except for jump pads, which uh, we don't really need right now. I mean, these these are useful for, you know, getting uh, getting around your base and stuff like that. But if for the moment, we can live without them. Uh, now that we have all that stuff unlocked, there's a few things we need to do. First and foremost, we have obstacle clearing unlocked now, which has given us solid biofuel, a far more efficient form of fuel for our biofuel generators. Uh, and you can see I have swapped it all out. Uh, but crafting biofuel is really tedious. So I think what we wanna do right now is automate the production of solid biofuel. And it's not super hard to do. So 
Uh, let's just throw down some platforms here. Change me to zoop mode. Does that six? And then this one's five. There we go. Let's just expand our platform a bit. Right there. Okay. So to do this, what we need to do, uh, you unfortunately, these biofuel generators do not have an automatic input. It's not possible to just uh, belt stuff directly into them. So it, we can't fully automate the biofuel generators. I wish we could. I wish you could get like a like an advanced biofuel generator or something that would still run on biofuel, but uh, you could like pipe stuff into it. Um, but what we can do instead is essentially set this up uh, so that all we have to do is pick up the biofuel from a storage crate and then put it into our generators, which uh, should be pretty straightforward. So I think what we're going to do is actually kind of start from our end step here. Let's do a storage container. Let's leave room for three more biofuel generators because I'm kind of running out of space. I mean, I suppose I could stack them on top by adding like extra platforms and stuff. But for now, let's just do, uh, we'll say a storage container right here, I think. Yeah, that should be fine. And then we're going to go production and make two constructors that are each going to go, ooh, that's, okay. We're gonna have to scoot this over a little bit. That's fine. Uh, let's actually do our constructors first here because they take up a fair amount of space. We'll plop down two constructors like so, and then grab our storage container. And I wanna put that, I really want it to be like right here here. Actually, you know what? It can go there. That's fine. This this will be okay, I think. Uh, maybe not. We might have to just move. Yeah, I'll, I'm probably going to have to stack generators on top of each other. That's okay. We can do that. So let's put our storage container, uh, we'll say like right there. That'll be fine. And then we need logistics... We need one merger to go like here. And then we'll go to here. Uh, uh, walk. I mean, is that? Yeah, that's. Is that a right angle? It kind of looks like a right angle. Sure. We'll we'll go with it. That'll be fine. Okay. And then last but not least, you go into here. So these guys are actually going to be producing solid biofuel. And then what we need is, let's think about this for a sec. We're going to need two more constructors. One here and here and then we need we actually kind of need like a merger and a splitter because we need to go merge and then immediately split it um, yeah, like right here. Oh, those are like clipping into each other. Not a fan of that. Uh, try this again. So give me a splitter. Can we put it there? Yeah, do this. Do that. And then there, we've already got our belt in here. Yes, we do. There we go. Okay, and then last but not least, we just need two more storage containers. We'll put one here 
and one here. And these, um, yeah, I think the regular belt should be fine. Uh, and then one of these will have leaves and one of these will have wood. So this one will be the leaves and it'll produce biomass out of leaves. And then this one will produce biomass out of wood. So what's going to happen is we'll do, we will gather leaves and wood. We'll dump them into their respective storage containers. It will then get converted into biomass, which will then be split between these two furnaces or these two constructors here, which will create biofuel. And that is essentially the plan. Uh, now, to facilitate the gathering of leaves and wood, I want to go ahead and make a chainsaw here. So let's do that. Very good. Oh, and then ultimately the bio, uh, the solid biofuel will end up right over here. That's the, that's the, the plan. Uh, okay, so put a chainsaw there. And it's pretty sweet. Oh, that's right. We actually need some solid biofuel in order to run this thing. But now we can chop down trees and get wood and leaves. And it will also get rid of anything else nearby that's on the ground. Um, as far as like plant stuff goes. So pretty useful. You know, makes it easy to gather wood and leaves and all that kind of stuff to convert into biofuel. I'm just going to gather a little bit here. We'll do like one more tree. There we go. That should be enough for now. And then we'll just pick up some of these leaves back along the way. Okay. So now to show you how this whole thing works. We'll dump the wood into here. And we'll dump the leaves into here. Uh, oh, and then we need to power everything, of course. Duh. I totally knew that. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's put one power thingy. Man, we're actually kind of running out of space for power. Let's do one, like, here and then here. How many connections? You have four? Um... What are you actually connected to? You're at four, four. Yeah, okay. So I think... I suppose we could run power... You're only at two? Yeah, let's do that. Let's put another power line here. Connect you up to that. Then you go to here. And you go to here. And then we'll just go one. There we go. Okay, so now these things are going. And these will produce leave. Uh, these will produce biomass. And this will produce biomass. Which will then ultimately get merged together. Because the biomass is the same. It's just a different recipe to create said biomass. And then those will get split into these separate things and uh, create our biofuel. That's essentially the plan. Now, it does take a little while here. Looks like it can actually use... Hmm. We probably didn't need two constructors because these are only producing 60 per minute. Oh, but these are producing 300 per minute. Okay, so what we should do then is turn that into a Mark II belt. Turn that into a Mark II belt. And turn both of those into Mark II belts as well. Which will help with the amount of stuff that's coming in. Okay, there we go. Anyway, ultimately, you can see we're getting bio uh, solid biofuel over here, which is then going to allow us to power all of our generators. So, not too bad. Now, to get this thing fully stocked up, I'm going to go on a biofuel gathering trip. Basically chop down a ton of trees and all that kind of stuff, because I don't want to have to worry about our power uh, while we're building all this other stuff. So while I was out exploring, I found uh, this little... Oh, hi. 
uh, this little crash site here. And this has some resources for us to grab, and also should have a hard drive, which can be used to unlock alternate recipes, if we can get into it. Uh, you can't actually, you can't get every single one. Uh, sometimes you need to turn in things to get in there. But let's see here. Okay, so in order to do, to get into this, we need one modular frame. And I don't think we've actually unlocked that yet. Maybe we have. Um, but this is super close to our base. Like, our base is quite literally right over this hill. It is right here. Like, this, it's just around the corner from me. So, uh, pretty sweet. That's good to know that that's there. We'll be able to take advantage of it and get one of those uh, hard drives as soon as we can get modular frames. In the meantime, though, I'm just going to pick up the resources and call it good. Actually, we can totally make modular frames, and they're really not that hard to make. Three reinforced iron plates and a few iron bars? Let's just make one batch of those, and I think we only needed one of them to go get that uh, hard drive. So let's go do that super quick. We've also unlocked research. So now that we've done that, we can take a lot of these resources that you find from exploring the world and uh, unlock stuff that way as well, such as the hard drive, for example. So if I throw this into here, we should be able to do that. It will take one of those modular frames. And now we have ourselves the hard drive. Go away, Ada. <laughs> the, uh, the AI telling me what to do. Uh, it's all good. So I set up a little research station kind of right over here. And I'm just going to grab a couple of things out of our storage box. We need those, these, the alien stuff, the sulfur, and the slug. Uh, and the quartz. And the guts. And I think that's it. Okay. So, I set it up right here. This is the MAM. It's the Molecular Analysis Machine. And we can put stuff in here. Oh, that's gonna take ten minutes. Okay, I should've done the other stuff first, because a lot of the stuff here, like... These, for example, three seconds. Three seconds. <laughs> Slugs. Three seconds, you know, the, the hard drive, I guess, takes 10 minutes. That's fine. We'll uh, we'll come back to it once that's all done. Um, but yeah, I'll be able to research stuff and unlock a bunch of stuff that way, which is super useful. Uh, so now I think the next step is to expand our power production. And I think the way I want to do this is to go, um, let's do like a... Is that going to be above? It's not. Let's do like a two... No, we probably do need to go the full four meters. If I want to stack more power on top. Or I could just move... Actually, can we fit another row of these back here? Maybe. Maybe I can just do that. Because this is all temporary anyway. Like, can I just... Do something like this? And then plop down. Like, if I put another biomass burner here... No, it's going to clip into the wall. Actually, no, I need more wire. That's easy. I've got tons of it right here. So if I go and I grab one of these, can I put that right here? I totally can. It's going to be a little tricky to get them where we want them to go. But I can also walk back here to fuel everything. So yeah, we can just do this. It's not pretty, but early on, we care about function, not form. Which sounds like heresy coming out of my mouth, but, uh, you know, it's totally fine. Now we've got four extra biofuel generators, and that should help us uh, take care of our... Uh, production and all that kind of, you know, that, that should basically give us enough power to produce the extra stuff that we're going to make this episode. Now, before we get into any real serious building, uh, we need to unlock a bunch of stuff. 
And the way that you do that is buying it from the awesome shop. Now, this is not awesome. This is not like microtransaction DLC nonsense. Uh, this is essentially an online air quotes. It's like Amazon within the game and you buy stuff using fix it tickets. And the way that you get fix it tickets is essentially dumping unwanted resources into the fix it awesome sink. So if I'm producing a ton of stuff and not using it all, like for example, right now, we probably have like, we might actually be full on iron bars. Yeah, we are completely full on iron bars. You can see our production is halted at the moment. So if I take a bunch of these, I just grab as many as we can fit in our inventory. And then we dump those into this storage container over here, like so they'll start going into the awesome sink, which will essentially destroy them, but then give us points and those points. Uh, once we reach a certain amount, it will give us a coupon. Then the amount for the next coupon will increase very slightly. The quality of the stuff that you put in does matter. So like you would get more resources, for example, for like modular frames over just basic iron bars. But basically anything extra that we just have a ton of that's that we're not using or that like we've reached our maximum capacity for storage, uh, I can just dump it into this storage container and, uh, re you know, basically turn it into tickets. And then we can use those tickets to buy stuff like conveyor walls and uh, wall mounts and new foundations and like a lot of, you know, catwalks, ladders, stairs, pillars, a lot of the stuff we're going to need to actually build things that look pretty are gated behind this. So that's kind of one of the reasons that we're not like building a bunch of pretty stuff right now. And there's a giant present right in the middle of my go go away thing. Um, <laughs> uh, that's kind of one of the reasons we're not really building a lot of stuff right now. So while I do this other stuff, I think I'm just going to, you know, kind of let this thing run in the background. I'll dump iron bars in here occasionally uh, and just let this kind of passively generate tickets for us. Also, our research should be done. Yeah, here we go. So we've analyzed that hard drive and now we can choose these different things. So we can choose 10 iron plates and 20 copper to make a stitched iron plate, which is essentially an alternate recipe for the, uh, the ones that need iron and screws. We could do 10 iron and five or uh, 10 copper, five iron for 20 copper alloy. Or we could do six iron sheets and 52 screws for the rotor. I don't actually know which one of these is going to be best. I'm kind of leaning towards the iron plate or the copper rotor. I think I'm going to go with the iron plate recipe. And, you know, maybe I hopefully I won't regret that later. But now that we've done this, we can also put other stuff in here as well. So like you find these uh, alien bits from, you know, killing the various aliens that attack you. You can be like, hey, I've got these alien bits. What can I do with them? And it will research them and then spit out new stuff here. For example, we can get a new um, a new recipe for biomass that converts alien bits into biomass. And like over here, we've got stuff we can do as well. and so on and so forth. And there's a ton of stuff here that we can unlock uh, by s essentially just going through the tree. The Some of this will also add it to the scanner so we can like look for this stuff in the future. Power slugs are awesome because this is how you get to overclocking, which will let you uh, essentially change the amount of um, like production that a machine does, which is super, super useful. Like there's a lot of really good stuff in here. So I'm going to go through research everything that I'm able to research right now. And then I'm probably going to go ahead and automate the copper a little bit better and maybe even add another limestone production. Uh, and then we'll go from there. So I made a couple changes to our uh, solid biofuel setup. Actually, I really only made one change. And that is that I took uh, I basically instead of having two constructors here that we're feeding in, uh, it really 
There was really no reason to, because 120 per minute, that's the most we could transport. So I swapped it out for one constructor, and then put a storage container here to hold biofuel in the meantime. That way, also, if I just have any biofuel sitting around, uh, we can get that going. And you can see, we're, uh, we're doing pretty well. We're getting a fair amount of organic biofuel. I am going to have to refill all these generators pretty soon. Um, also, I went ahead and I fully automated all of our copper. So, well, or at least one of the copper nodes. There's another one, like, actually, you know what? I can zoom. There's another one way up there, and all I have up there right now is the miner. I don't actually have um, the, the full setup, but this node right here is fully automated, and we should be able to get a pretty good view of it up here, I think. Eh, kind of? Not really. Um, <laughs> okay. Oh, hi, present dropping a present on my head um so yeah if we pop over here this is a a 100 resource efficient setup so we've got a pure copper node uh mark ii conveyor belt gets split into uh two separate mark one conveyor belts so these these are each transporting 60 copper then that's going into four smelters total, which can each take 30 uh, copper, so that's 100% resource efficient, and those are producing the ingots. Over on this side, we have one of those smelters fully dedicated to making copper wire, and you need 15 ingots per minute to make 30 wire in a single constructor, so two of those, that's using up all of these ingots. Over on this side, we have two more that are dedicated to copper wire, but instead, those are being used to make cable, which takes 60 copper wire per minute, which is the output of these two constructors, to make 30 cable per minute. So we're producing cable here as well, using up all of those resources. And then last but not least, we have two more smelters that are dedicated to creating copper sheets. And copper sheets take 20 copper ingots per minute to make 10 sheets. So each of these smelters produces 20. That means when you combine two smelters on the same project, they're making 60. And then we're splitting that 60 ingots between three constructors to make the sheets. Therefore, it is, again, 100% resource efficient. So we are fully using all of these resources coming out of that uh, pure copper node over there to create copper sheets, wire, and cable. And then finally, they're going into some storage modules. I reworked the storage modules on both of these so that essentially what happens is once it reaches the containers, uh, it goes up, feeds into this top one, and then the top one from the front automatically feeds it down into the bottom one. That way it's just a little bit easier to get to. And we have two storage containers devoted to each of these various resources. Uh, I did the same for the concrete and for all the iron stuff we're making over there as well. Also, our awesome uh, sink over here. We are now up to 14 tickets, almost 15. There we go. So let's print off our tickets here and just grab those. And let's get some stuff here in the awesome shop. There's a few things we want to get as quickly as possible. Conveyor walls, I think, are super important. Um, we also want... We're going to get the functional stuff first. And then we'll worry about the aesthetic stuff afterwards. Um, yeah, probably want that and this... That is 13. So we still have two more tickets we can spend, or I could just hold on to them. Maybe we just get stairs, honestly. I think stairs would probably be pretty good. Let's do that. Okay, so this is 15 tickets, and we will buy that. And now we have unlocked a whole bunch of good stuff. So if we look at architecture, we now have stairs, and we have some new walls. These are pretty cool. You can plop them down and then feed conveyor belts directly into them, which I think is uh, it 
looks really nice, and it keeps everything nice and clean, too, so it's pretty sweet. Um, but I think that is about all we have time for in this episode. We automated the production of solid biofuel, and we set up our copper. Next episode, we're going to have to... Uh, I mean, we've basically unlocked pretty much everything we can right now, uh, so we're going to have to get the space elevator and start plugging some stuff into that uh, so that we can unlock the higher tiers of technology and all that kind of stuff and that's going to require setting up an assembler and some other cool stuff uh, so we'll get into that probably in the next episode but that is going to do it for me guys if you enjoyed the video you know what to do links in the description below so check that out as well otherwise my friends thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one